Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to CData Arc. This video introduces data transformation in Arc, frequently used in EDI and application integration flows. So let's get started. Arc uses XML as the common format for data transformation. Here's an example of an EDI file translated into XML, and here is an example of a database table formatted as XML. The task in Arc is to first translate your file or backend data storage into an XML template, and then map one XML format onto the other. Let's use an example to show how this works. Namely, let's map an X12810 invoice into a CSV file. Since I'm working with X12 and CSV, I'll need an X12 connector and a CSV connector here in the flow. These connectors convert EDI or CSV data to XML and vice versa. To finish off the flow, I'll need an XML map connector. This is the workhorse data transformation connector in Arc and is used in essentially every data transformation flow. Once I've got my connectors in the flow, I'll connect them like this so the data moves automatically from one connector to the next. Next, I want an example X12810 input file, like this one. Now if I don't have a sample file, the X12 connector can generate generic 810 templates, but a sample file makes this a bit easier. Next, I need a sample CSV output file, which is what I'm looking to generate from my EDI data. We'll use CSV for this example, but data mapping in Arc uses the same principles for databases and other backend systems as well. So I'll start here with the X12 connector, where I can head to the input tab and use this more dropdown option to upload my sample 810 as a test file in the connector. This lets the X12 connector turn this sample file into an XML template for mapping later. Then I can head to the CSV connector and follow the same process with my sample CSV file. This will once again let the CSV connector generate an XML template out of my sample file. Now that we have our input and output templates, the final task is to map one template onto the other. I'll go into the XML map connector and see that it's already read that CSV template that I uploaded as the destination template for our mapping. I just need to finalize the source template for our mapping. And to do that, I need to select the X12 document type that I'm working with. Here we see the list of generic X12 templates but I can scroll to the bottom to find my specific test file that I just uploaded. Now, the visual designer shows the XML structure for both my source and my destination, and now I need to drag from the left onto the right to establish a mapping relationship between the two. The details of advanced mapping extend beyond the scope of this particular video, but here's the quick version. First, I need to establish for each relationships for any repeated structures in my data. In this case, the EDI invoice might contain multiple line items, and each row in my CSV file should correspond to a new line item. So, my for each relationship needs to be on this repeated line item structure. And I know that the IT1 loop 1 element corresponds to a line item in my invoice, so I'll simply drag that onto the invoice line items element here on the right. We can see this establishes a for each relationship within the mapping. Now, I can start mapping individual values from my EDI document into my CSV file. For instance, I know that the purchase order number is here in BIGO2, so I can simply drag that onto the appropriate column name in my CSV file, like this. Then, my invoice number is in BIGO4, so I can simply do the same. From here, I could go through these in one loop one elements to map my customer data, and for more information on determining which of these in one loop ones contains your customer data, please check out our advanced mapping series. So I could continue mapping more values here, but hopefully the pattern is clear. It's all drag and drop, and first you start with repeated structures in your data, like repeated line items, then you map the individual values within those structures. Okay, so I'll go ahead and save my mapping changes, and then test this flow by running an EDI file through it. I'll go to the input tab of the X12 connector, upload the file that I want to send through the flow, and then hit send. This file will now be converted into XML, and then mapped into a new structure of XML, and then finally converted into CSV. So I can find the CSV output here in the CSV connectors output tab, and I'll bring it up here so we can see it. So this CSV file is a bit sparse because I only mapped a few values in the document, but hopefully it demonstrates the point that my EDI data has been mapped into a CSV format. So that's a brief overview on how to create data transformation flows within CData Arc. For more information on mapping specifics, please do check out our advanced mapping video series where we dig into all of the features of the XML map connector. Thanks for watching. And as always, you can find more resources at arc.cdata.com.